Hey guys, so one of the newest tools, one of the best tools for someone like me and other people who want to do hex editing is the Hex on Steroids tool created by Leftos at the NLSC. Uh, this tool is just freaking amazing. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. What it allows you to do is select profiles that you create. Like let's say we want to look at colors for courts. And I already set this profile up. I'll go over that later in the video. And I can just load up the Celtics file like always. And if you go to the right here, we can see right here and identify that these are the court colors that uh, to say what is green, what is uh, the the court the wood color, um, and even the line color and you know the red lines in the line in the lane and everything. And we can also use this tool to set up multiple profiles. So we can do reflections in courts. Yes, we can close that out. So let's load up the Celtics again, and it's going to auto detect. And here we can see that uh, I've already modified these files to 10 values where they used to be 1. And this just lets the, uh, you know, it just modifies the reflections in a much more vibrant kind of way. Now, it's not just limited to uh, chords. You can make these things however you want to make them. Uh, with this uh, dialog right here, you can edit and create your own um, things that you can do. So this is use big NDNS, this is use little NDNS. Um, and yeah, I, I'm going to go over all this, but uh, let's say let's open up this. Let's open up the a uniform file because this used to work for 2K12 last year. Now this is going to return back values of a certain range that I gave it to allow me to edit the shaders of uniforms. And last year this let me um, change the scale of uniforms, which I haven't found that yet this year. But this would let me if it worked again it would let me do um, the tight uniforms uh, without editing the exe file which we don't allow at the NLSC. So let's go into a little bit more detail on how to do this. Um, so if we look at my reflections profile, let's go into edit and let's load it up. As you can see I, I did this multiple times just for myself. But let's go to reflections and to, to make these new ones, you hit add here and you can add a new category and then when you select the category you can click add here and add a new profile. But we don't need to do that today. So we're going to go to courts, we're going to go to reflections. As you can see right here, I want to auto detect with a custom header because as we know from past um, hex tutorials, we have the ability to change these colors and everything. But by looking at the raw hat, he, excuse me, the raw hex. And this was a little bit of a process. This is a little bit of an easier process, but it's still a little bit of a process. So this is my uh, text tutorial, my text and picture tutorial that I have on the NLSC. We want to search for this, which is from the old hex tutorial. And you want to set it up like this. And as you can see, I already have all these values set up, obviously, because I'm the one that made this. So we press OK. Um, let's just open up. you got to make sure this the floor file you open up is actually, um, what's the best way to put this? Um, decompressed, sorry. So you have to open it either with the mod tool or use the old uh, 2K12 decompressor tool to uh, make sure it's decompressed. Now, as you open it, I've already modified these files myself. But you can see right here where I have these threes. This is both the player and the stadium reflection values. And what this is going to do is increase the reflection um, that we see on, on the court. So I think it's the uh, bottom one, I believe. It's in the text tutorial. But I think the bottom one is for the stadiums. The top one is for the, or the second to last one, is for the players. Now, some people have been having issues. I have only really did this as a proof of concept on the Celtics court. And I was able to edit all of these different values without any issue. Let me just check to see if I have my backup, which you should always have backups. <laughs> Here we go. So yes, you see all the ones here. And as you saw, I changed these to 10 to give a really dramatic, shiny reflection effect that I love and I think is actually pretty realistic. So that is how you, I mean, this tool is as awesome because you just type in 3, 10, I mean, whatever you want to type in. And when you hit save, that's saved. It's that easy and it makes it so much easier. Because the alternative, if you remember from the tutorial I did last year, um, if you go into the hex editing, this is what you edit. 
this is what you try to search through to find these values. And it is just a pain in the ass, to put it lightly. So it would go here, and then here are my values right here. And you'd have to look over here at the float value and try to figure that out. And then you had to go to the base converter, and we want floats, and we want a 10. So that would tell us, oops, I didn't mean to close that. That would tell us, <sighs> trying to make a point and just for a second, it takes too long. And that would tell us what to input here. Now it's just much, much easier using this tool instead. And it goes the same for the court colors. And I'll do a quick one with that. So let's open up, my, not my backup, because I want to protect those, make sure I don't screw up on my backups. <laughs> so when you open up the court colors, you're going to see a bunch of this. And again, I uh, also in my tech tutorial down here, I relayed what you need to do to set up the values to get to the court colors. And if you look to the right, keep going to the right, keep going to the right, when you start seeing this one value at the bottom, that means that is a color that the court is using. But, and it's a standard RGB color, but it doesn't look like that. I mean, this is the R, this is the G, this is the B. Red, green, blue. But that doesn't look, you know, anything like a color. So, what I do is I take these three values and I do Control C and copy them out. I open up uh, Open Office Calc, which is the same as, uh, you know, Excel. So I paste it in. As you can see, it has the custom header, which is cool. That's something that Leftos did. He's been really good with that. So what I do is a little formula. These values are proportions of what the colors might be in the full scale. So long story short, <laughs> you just do a little equation. You have to multiply these by 255 to get the value out of them. So by 255. And if you know Excel, this is going to be really easy for you. So again, this is red, green, blue. And there's a couple of, little, of uh, websites you can do this online with, but I honestly just prefer loading up GIMP and doing it in here. And if I type in these three values here, so we have a value of 76, uh, 121, 73. That looks like the Celtics green that is surrounding the court and in the lanes. And in fact, I, you know, just by loading up the game after I tried that, that is what that color controls, the out-of-bounds color and the lane color. And what I can do if I want to go backwards, let's say I want to have it be, oh, I don't know, let's go with a gold. Um, sure, let's say this gold color. So I have 186, 182, and 62. 186, 182, 62. So this is my custom RGB values I want to import back into the court. Set up a little uh, formula. You want to take this and you want to divide it by 255. And this gives me these decimals back. So that's all I did right there, was I just divided all these by 255. If I go back into the hex on steroids tool, all I have to do is just type in 0.72941. 0 0.71372, 0 0.24314. That's it. Now, if I were to save this and load up this court, it would have a gold, or well, that kind of P, <laughs> gold, P yellow, gold color in the lane and in the out of bounds for the Celtics court. That is how easy it is. Remember, <laughs> the old tutorial was going through all of that hex crap and this is just makes it so much easier. And what's nice is that it identifies all of the colors that you don't have to go searching for anymore. So I believe this color right here, um, RGB, no, this would be it right here. So I got these three values right here. I can just paste them in right there. There's my uh, colors I want to edit. So let's go drop it in right here real quick. 182, 54, 34. You know those red little lane ticks in the Celtics court? That's what those control right there. So that is lane color that I can change right now. I can make that gray. I can make it whatever I need to do and import it right in. This does so much to make making unique courts so much easier or even making the accurate courts much more accurate. Couple that with being able to use 2K12 courts so you can have the uh, D-League courts and other um, custom courts that aren't in 2K13 you can import them in from the 2K12 files and it still works perfectly fine. 
I haven't tested it. This might still work on 2K11 and 2K10. Um, uh, because it's the same process. This tutorial that you know we have here goes back till 2K10. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of that tool. Um, it's amazing. It does everything that you could ask it to do, and all you have to do is that for one person who knows hex editing, and they want to be able to share their work with everyone else, which if you do know it, I strongly suggest you do that. Just set up a profile, do a quick little uh, screenshot like this one right here, telling people what you used, or you can even share your profiles, and that is all you need to do to make the community much more informed and make editing much more easier. So I hope you guys learned something from this, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.